Welp, we just finished the third round of Democratic debates where it's been limited down to 10 people. And in this first video, we're gonna break down and see how Bernie Sanders did. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community or in the world or in politics and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. All right, so if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And yeah, make sure you follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul, because I love engaging with all of you and I, I put out different like, you know, questions and things like that to get ideas and stuff for videos, but I also like engage engaging with all of you because something I'm like really adamant about, especially when it comes to politics, is like we need to have discussions. We need to share different thoughts, different opinions, all sorts of things. So yeah, follow me on social media at The Rewired Soul. All right. So like many other people, I watched the Democratic debates last night and I will, I will probably, I will probably break down each candidate and share my thoughts and opinions. And I always want you to share your thoughts and opinions down below because here's the thing, something I've been really on lately is our own bias, right? Like bias is there no matter what. Like one of the most frustrating things to me is when people are like, you're biased. It's like, we all have bias. Like even scientists have bias. That's why they have peer reviewed studies, all right? So we need to challenge each other's thoughts because when we, when we look at candidates we like, no matter who it is, no matter what side of the aisle it is, we're looking at them through these rose colored lenses, right? And everything is amazing. Like. Maybe you guys will point things down out down in the comments where I'm missing something about a certain candidate, you know, things like that. Like, let's just have a conversation, but please, for the love of God, like just be chill and talk like adults, all right? <laughs> but yeah, I'm probably gonna cover all the candidates. I'm really gonna try to by the end of the weekend, but I wanna start off with Bernie Sanders. So speaking of bias, like Bernie Sanders is probably my number one, all right? I was rooting for him, you know, uh, during the last elections and then he kind of got screwed over by the DNC and all that kind of stuff. You all know the story, but anyways, Bernie Sanders, like he stands up for a lot of things that I believe in and um, I, I love his policies and everything like that. But something I wanna talk about in this video is how mainstream media screws him over so bad with the way they question him. And it is just, I hope people notice it. I just, I just really hope, and I try to use my platform to just bring attention to this stuff because it's absolutely silly, all right? Like if you're not down with the policies and things like that, like that's cool, but like these kind of like, like backhanded like gotcha questions are just so, so silly, all right? But anyways, so let's talk about, um, you know, how the debate started, which was the Medicare for all question. All right. And, you know, it got kind of heated between, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. Elizabeth Warren was in the mix and things like that, uh, because Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders are the ones who are really vocal about this. And as many of you know, Bernie wrote the damn bill. All right. So here's what's frustrating about the way that they try to phrase the question, okay? Like, I, I hope you guys notice this because it's just so ridiculous. And if I was Bernie Sanders, I would just be so annoyed. I'd be so annoyed that people keep asking it this way. But it's been clearly laid out that we, we benefit overall, all right? And they're constantly asking, but will taxes go up for the middle class, right? Like they keep trying to do that because they know that just mentioning that taxes will go up, even if it's like a penny, right? They know that that's gonna trigger something in people. So they always try to focus on that. And it's, it's hard, like I am not a fan of conspiracy theories. Like I am not a fan, but we know there is so much involved with like, corporations and big pharma getting involved with politics and things like that. Like it was brought up multiple times and I love how Bernie Sanders like brings this up. Like there are pharmaceutical ads playing during the debate. So you have to wonder like, are they phrasing the question like this in the interest of big pharma? And I, I bring this stuff up because you and me are the ones who are giving big pharma just insane amounts of money. 
all right? So pay attention to how they phrase the question, all right? But will the taxes go up? Because here's the thing about human nature, all right? We are more about immediate gratification than long-term re rewards, right? So if any of you, you know, know about the famous marshmallow experiment, right? Where they're like, here kid, here's one marshmallow. Or if you wait, you can have two marshmallows. And most kids ate the one marshmallow, right? But with long-term studies, the ones who were able to delay gratification were the ones who were more successful in life. So don't always look at this thing as like right now, right now, right now, right now, because that's what's kind of this Medicare for all plan is, right? It saves us money over time, okay? And I don't know about you, but Bernie Sanders talking about nobody paying more than $200 for prescriptions each year, like, pff, sign me up. Like a few years ago, my dad had quadruple bypass. Long story short, his medications were gonna be an arm and a leg, all right? Just an insane amount of money. And the dude just had his rib cage cracked open, right? So when I hear them talking about medications, like my own medications, I'm on two different blood pressure medications and then Prozac for anxiety and depression. And my medications aren't that expensive. But like when I was helping my dad after his surgery, I'm like, holy crap, these are expensive. So when Bernie's talking about limiting like the maximum amount of uh, uh, money that you'll pay for prescriptions, like I'm all for that, all right? Because there's so many people, especially people like, you know, my dad, uh, my mom's on medications. I know, you know, if you're around my age, you probably have parents who are on a bunch of medications too. And we all know that these pharmaceutical prices are absolutely ridiculous. So something that I loved about Bernie Sanders too was when he sassed Joe Biden. I can't remember how he said it or what he said, but he was just like, I don't know who you know who loves their premiums, right? Because like, that's the thing, like, holy crap. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And please let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, because maybe I am just in some insane bubble. But like the way the way other candidates or even the moderators asking these questions make it sound, they make it sound like there is just this vast majority of people who absolutely love their health insurance plan. I have yet to meet those people. Like real quick story, back when I was working at the Drug and Alcohol Treatment Center, I had amazing insurance, like amazing insurance. And it was still going to cost me thousands of dollars to get uh, a sleep apnea test, a machine and everything like that, like with amazing insurance. And then that's just for me. Like luckily my son is covered on a different plan. But as many of you know, especially if you're a parent out there, like once you put a child or even a spouse on your insurance plan, like what you're paying monthly is absolutely insane. So the amount of money that we're putting into insurance, the fact that they're not even doing a great job covering tests, visits, and things like that is mind blowing. I just, like again, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below, but I, I can't think of anybody who is just like, I love my deductible, I love these things, right? Like it can be a lot better and like here's the thing one of the arguments is is like i don't want to take away their their options right like pete uh I, and i'm never gonna say his name right i will try and i apologize mayor pete let's call him mayor pete okay because something he tried to you know bring up to bernie sanders was like oh you you're saying you don't trust the american people you don't trust the american people and stuff like that i forgot who said it maybe it was trevor noah last night he was like Maybe we shouldn't trust the American people because one out of five people believe in Bigfoot. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, like what they're talking about a lot though is taking away our options. Like I'm letting you know right now as an American citizen who has been dealing with health insurance stuff for all my adult life, take away my options. Take away my options. I, I trust that you can do better, all right? Like, you know, the arguments that come up are wait times and things like that. The next thing I wanna bring up real quick, just kind of wrap up the Medicare for All topic, is a few weeks ago, Bernie Sanders announced uh, a bill to alleviate medical debt. And this is something that he's also working on with student loan debt and everything like that, which is dope. Like me personally, I have tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, if, if not over a hundred thousand of dollars, in medical debt. And this is from years ago when I was in my drug addiction. Like I 
When I was dying from my drug addiction seven years ago, I didn't have insurance. And I was in the hospital, I was in the cardiac critical care unit, and it racked up the bills, all right? So that's something else that we need to take into consideration. Like medical billing is just insane and everybody is winning out there except for us if we're not in the medical industry, all right? But the next thing I really wanna talk about is the, the gotcha questions that they try with the socialism, all right? So like, let me make this very clear. There's a difference between socialism and democratic socialism. Kyle Kalinske from Secular Talk, he did a video about this maybe about a year ago and he explained it very well. If I could find it, I'll link it down in the description. But here is just what's mind blowing, right? Is, and it's such a silly question and way to ask it like, oh, you like socialism? Well, what about Venezuela? Let's talk about Venezuela. Like, are you, mad like are you serious right now so what you're seeing on the screen right now are the happiest countries in the world the top seven the top seven happiest countries in the world are scandinavian countries okay how many times does bernie sanders have to say that he is looking towards the models of Scandinavian countries and the, the, the aspects of democratic socialism that they use rather than pointing at the worst absolute version. Like this is something that the right does all the time. So it, it breaks my heart when I see people who are, you know, the, these democratic, these Democrats, like trying to use those talking points. It's just like, it's so shady and it's so ridiculous. And I feel like as somebody with a platform, like it's part of my responsibility to come out here and just point these things out because it's so, so shady. And listen, like you don't even have to agree with me. Like I said, I encourage differences of opinions and conversations and everything like that. But we need to be our own independent thinkers. And what you need to understand is even when you're watching these debates, the way the way the moderators form these questions are not good, all right? Listen to the candidates, here's my opinion. Listen to the candidates and form your own opinions and go out and do your own research, all right? But the fact that they keep saying, well, what, what, about, what about Venezuela? Like, has anybody, has anybody ever said like, you know what, I wanna, I wanna model this after Venezuela? No. And something that was ridiculous that um, Joe Biden, I think it was, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Joe Biden. He's, he's a silly guy. But anyways, uh, he, he brought up, he's like, well, that's other countries. We're the United States. And that's one of the issues that I think the United States has been running into for years now is this hubris, right? Like, oh, we need to do it our own way. Like, who cares about the happiest countries in the world? We need to do it our way. I don't care how Canada's doing it. I don't care how Scandinavian countries are doing it. We need to do it our way. Like, like talk about egotistical. Like, you know what I mean? Like, at what point do we realize, okay, people are dying, people are broke, people are miserable, Something they didn't talk about much last night, which I might do a separate video on, is uh, they never talk about mental health, right? But like people are depressed, suicide rates are up, uh, addiction rates, and all these other things. Like we're, we're leading, we're leading all the other nations in all the wrong things, all right? So maybe it's time that we start taking from other people's playbooks. One of the best life philosophies that I ever learned is look to somebody who's doing it better than you are and try to walk in their footsteps. Like we need to learn from other people. So I don't know about you, but I wanna look at the happiest countries in the world and say, hey, what are they doing that maybe we can do here, all right? But anyways, Bernie Sanders is probably my number one, um, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, let me know who you want me to cover next. Uh, like Bernie Sanders, uh, I didn't know if I should start out with him because he's one of my favorites. Um, I definitely wanna talk you know, about Andrew Yang. Um, as some of you know, I've done some videos about him, but there's some other candidates that I'm not a huge fan of. So anyways, let me know who you think should be next from the Democratic debates and 
I don't know. I'll take it into consideration. Maybe make that for the next video. All right. But anyways, share, share your thoughts with me down in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And a huge thank you to everybody else who supports the channel in other ways. I buy in merch like this cool shirt of my kitty uh, <laughs> and buy my books and all that kind of stuff. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.